Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video I want to discuss the energy yield of the citric acid cycle or the Krebs or TCA cycle. In the previous video we discussed the actual reaction steps themselves but today I just want to focus on a few of the reactions of the cycle. So I want to point out this reaction here. It's the conversion of isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate and as we can see NAD plus is reduced to form NADH Another important reaction is the conversion of alpha ketoglutarate to NAD plus and NADH. We have the conversion of succinyl-CoA to succinate producing a GTP. We have succinate being converted into fumarate to form FADH2. And finally another NADH plus being formed from the conversion of malate to oxaloacetate. Now, uh, since we have two molecules of acetyl-CoA because we initially had two molecules of pyruvate from one molecule of glucose the TCA cycle or the citric acid cycle goes around twice for each acetyl-CoA molecule now these um, electron carriers which are produced the NADH and the FADH2 they can be converted well they can be used in the formation of ATP in the electron transport chain which we'll be making a separate video about but one molecule of NADH will form uh, sorry, three ATP and one molecule of FADH2 will produce approximately two ATP and one molecule of GTP will produce one ATP via the nucleoside diphosphate kinase reaction where GTP will combine with ADP to produce GDP and one ATP. So since one NADH will produce approximately three ATP, this gives us uh, nine ATP altogether from one spin of the cycle. For one FADH2 we get two ATP and one GTP we get one ATP. So this gives us a total of 12 ATP. So since since the cycle goes around twice we can double this number and then we'll get 24 ATP which is produced from two spins of the citric acid cycle however um, the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA also produces an NADH so since this happens twice we get an additional two, AD, uh, sorry, two NADHs that are being produced so I've made that note here that there's an additional two NADHs being produced. So this means if these two NADHs are also used in the electron transport chain, then we get an approximately about six extra ATPs. So the total energy production from the citric acid cycle, when it includes the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, will be 30 ATP molecules. That's everything for today's video. In the next video, we'll be discussing the regulation of the citric acid cycle. Thanks for watching.